Once upon a time, there was a nerdy girl in school who was always getting picked on. One day, the school had a talent show. She took off her glasses and sang with a passion beyond all comprehension. Every guy asked her out after that. That's basically Estonia. It's time to learn geography. No! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbie. Welcome back to Europe! And we have reached our first country in the Baltic, Estonia. This is gonna get good, trust me. But first... Estonia is without a doubt Europe's little wild card. You never know what you're gonna get with these people, but they always seem to surprise you. First of all, Estonia is classified as a North European country. Do not call them Eastern as it has former USSR connotations that they do not want to be affiliated with. Located on the Baltic Sea, just a short ferry ride south below their brothers in Finland, bordered by Russia to the east and Latvia to the south. The country is divided into 15 counties, or Makunad, with the capital Tallinn, located in the north just on the Gulf of Finland in the Baltic. However, it's been said that the country kind of rotates capitals around the as Tartu is considered the cultural capital, with its juxtaposition of classic and postmodern architecture and a myriad of conceptually abstract statues. And then there's Parnu, considered the summer capital, with its rock and beach and bonfire parties. These three cities also host the largest airports. The country owns over 2,200 islands and islets, and the largest ones being Sarima and Hiuma, which act as their own counties. When it comes to their borders with Russia, things get a little weird. To this day, many maps of Estonia in Estonia still include the areas of East Narva, or Ivanograd, with the two opposing castles facing each other on the river, and the South Petseri or Petserima region, which were respectively annexed by Russia technically, but there's still an ownership dispute, kind of. It's it's weird. Not only that, but there are also some strange border disparities, like the Narva River waterway exit into the largest lake, Lake Peipus or Peipsi, <laughs> Peipsi, the largest transboundary lake in Europe. And then there's the Satse Boot, a part of Russia that overlaps the Estonian 178 road for only 900 meters. Drivers from Estonia are not required to carry permits when passing through on car, but they're not allowed to pass on foot or stop by and pick any of the mushrooms. The Latvian border is pretty simple and straightforward until you get to the town of Valga, in which you get another Haskell Library incident in which the entire town is split in half by the border running straight through streets and roads. Speaking of roads, in the wintertime when the Baltic freezes over, a charming little miracle happens. Estonia gains the world's longest ice road that travels from the mainland to Hiuma Island in the west. The road is about 26 kilometers long and operates between January and March when the ice is just thick enough to carry the weight of most vehicles. Speaking of roads again, Estonia has strict rules on wearing reflective clothing at night. If you are caught at night not wearing something that helps others see you, you could get up to 400 euros in a fine. Otherwise, Estonia is quite a charming place with quaint towns and saunas everywhere, and clear Wi-Fi can be found even in the most remote areas in the country. Even in the middle of the forest, which is actually kind of growing pretty fast. Let's explain in... Okay, I didn't really think it was gonna be this easy, but one way you can remember what Estonia is like is that it's really actually kind of stony. Found in the lush forests and meadows, Estonia is actually home to more giant boulders than any other European nation, over 60 of which have diameters over 30 meters wide, all of which protected by the government. Not only that, but Estonia also has more meteorite craters per square kilometer than anywhere else in Europe for some reason. The most notable ones being the Kali craters on Sarema Island and the massive eight kilometer wide Neugrund crater under the sea with impact residue pieces found all over the coast of Osumar in the north. And not only that, but Estonia is also Europe's largest shale oil producer, second in the world after China, with most of the rocky deposits found along the north and northeastern parts of the country. By the way, little side note. Shale oil is an unconventional source of fuel in which the oil is trapped in rock fragments and extracted in a process that adds hydrogen to remove impurities. Simply put, Estonia is pretty lush and beautiful. They're actually going through a reforestation phase right now, partially thanks to the declining population, in which now over half of the entire country, some numbers estimate over 60%, is covered in forest. Estonia is generally flat. I mean, the highest point, Surmunamagi, or Egg Mountain, is only 318 meters tall, and at over 1400, they have a ton of lakes and even more small ponds. The rest of the country is comprised of open bogs, fens, and wetlands. They're never short in supply of fresh, boggy mud. And waterfalls, oh my gosh, some amazing ones like in Balaste, Yagala, and Keayoa Falls are some of the most pristine, magnificent nature sites. But definitely try not to miss out on the national animal, the charming blue barn swallow. In terms of produce, Estonia is a very hearty meat and potatoes type of country, with national dishes like blood sausage and lingonberries, and raim or Baltic dwarf herring. They love that hard liquor, and it comes really cheap too. Because the alcohol is expensive and highly regulated by their government, Finnish people typically take the 45 minute ferry to Estonia simply to just buy cheap alcohol and come back. I'm not even joking. Oh, Estonia, you people are so unique. Let's tell the world who you are. 
Ah, uh, Estonia, you want so bad to be labeled as Nordic. You're so close, but uh, yeah, not quite there. First of all, the country has about 1.3 million people and has seen a 19% population decline in the past two decades. The country is made up of nearly 70% of people that identify as ethnically Estonian, about 23% of the country is Russian, and the remainder are mostly Ukrainians, Finns, and other people groups. The national currency is a euro. They use the type F outlet and drive on the right side of the road. Estonians speak Estonian, a Uralic based language in the same group as Finnish. Hungarian is technically a far off distant cousin that they kind of lost contact with. Almost every Estonian I talked to has said that they can probably understand Finnish better than the Finns can understand them due to the fact that they have regular access to Finnish TV, whereas the Finns don't have Estonian. If they listen very hard, they might be able to have like a very basic conversation with each other. However, to speed things up, they usually just speak English. By the way, Estonia is fairly English friendly as it is taught in schools and most of the younger generation can carry on a decent conversation. Now, culture-wise, Estonia may be small, but is packed with detail. First of all, throughout history, they were either subject to the Danes, Swedes, and the Germans, or the Russians, until finally they gained independence from the Soviet Union in 1991, literally by singing. Seriously. In 1987, Estonia was the first Soviet Republic to defy the Soviet army, and they started to gather in huge crowds and spontaneously started singing Estonian national songs, which were strictly forbidden. And without any bloodshed, eventually won their independence. They gained freedom through song, which is why it's no surprise that at over 133,000, Estonia has the largest collection of written folk songs out of any country in the world. They take singing seriously here. And swinging. Estonians invented the sport of keeking, which is like when a person gets on a swing with solid arms made of steel with the objective to swing an entire 360 degrees around the fulcrum. Today, Estonia has developed dramatically from its former years. Estonia is a highly tech-savvy country with more startups per capita than anywhere else in Europe. They invented Hotmail, Kaza, and Skype, which was pretty much invented by Estonians. I mean, there was a Swede and a Dane involved somewhere, but the Estonians did pretty much all of the programming. Now, here's the thing. To this day, Estonia has the highest prevalence of females to males in the world with 0.84 men for every one woman. It's been said the reasoning behind this is because so many of the men were killed during the Soviet times, leaving an influx of women behind. To this day, Estonia also has the highest number of international fashion models per capita in the world. I mean, after all those years of getting the pick of the litter, I guess Estonians bred some really attractive people. Unfortunately, Estonia also has one of the highest unmarried and single parent ratios in Europe as well. Part of this has to do with the fact that Estonia disputedly has the lowest importance of religion on any country in Europe, as less than 20% claim to be affiliated with any religion at all. Therefore, many people don't really see a need for marriage as grounds to define the relationship as it has just social and sometimes even religious institutional connotations that has no bearance on their lives and they choose to just kind of bypass it altogether. To this day, many Estonian children are raised by a single parent who may cohabit with another partner but almost likely will never get married. Which is funny because they really do well at wife carrying competitions. We'll explain more about that in the Finland episode. But we will talk more about Finland in... Okay, so since the fall of the Soviet Union, Estonia has pretty much re-revolutionized the entire way that they engage with outsiders. In 2004, they joined the European Union and quickly gained ties to the Nordic countries that they've longed to unite with for like forever. Iceland was actually the first country to recognize their independence and Estonians to this day even consider themselves Nordic. Although the term is kind of debatable with other Nordic countries. Again, after the fall of the Soviet Union, Estonia actually kind of still kept close ties with all the other former states that also gained independence, like in Central Asia, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, as well as the Caucasus region regions, Azerbaijan, Armenia, and Georgia. It was kind of like, hey, remember the old days when big old Russia used to control us? Well, not anymore. High five, bro. Lithuania and Latvia are kind of like the two friends that they used to play with in the sandbox when they were kids, but then they kind of grew up and kind of stopped hanging out. Lithuania and Latvia are kind of like, Estonia, just accept the fact that you are Baltic, not Nordic. Join us. Their best friends, however, would have to be Finland. Finland is kind of like the bigger brother that has always loved his little sister, but hated seeing her get tossed around from empire to empire. They share the same cultures and general life values and have always been there for each other as the last surviving Uralic peoples on the planet. In conclusion, if Europe was a choir, Estonia would be like that one girl who didn't get any solos, but then gets to sing that one high note that causes the whole crowd to give her a standing ovation. Stay tuned, Ethiopia is coming up next.